Chapter 5.2, Transformations of Sinusoidal Functions. Recall that sinusoidal functions just refers to sine functions and cos functions. Sinusoidal transformations, you can determine the amplitude period horizontal translation, which is called the phase shift for sinusoidal functions and the vertical translation of sinusoidal functions when the equations are given in the form y equals a sine bracket b bracket x minus c close bracket close bracket plus d. This is similar to what we've seen previously with transformations on functions. The a value is the vertical stretch factor. If it's negative, then the graph is reflected across the x-axis. The b value is the horizontal stretch factor. If it's negative, the graph is reflected across the y-axis. Here we have the h is now called c, and that's the horizontal translation still, which for sinusoidal functions is called the phase shift. And then the vertical translation instead of k is called d for sinusoidal functions. A quick review from 5.1, we know that parameter A is the vertical stretch factor and it determines the amplitude of the graph and parameter B is a horizontal stretch factor that determines the period of the graph. Example, write the equation of each graph in the form indicated. First one, y equals sine bx. The graph goes through the point zero, zero and heads up as it goes to the right. That's the same direction as y equals sine x. And that tells us that the a value is positive and the b value is positive. If the a value was negative, then it would flip the graph and it would move down as we move right of the origin. And if b was negative, then it would flip across the y-axis. So since this is heading down, if we flipped that, then again, it would also be heading down as we move right of the origin. So we know that it's going the same direction as y equals sine x, which means a and b are both positive. Let's determine the amplitude. We can use the equation a equals max minus min divided by two. The max in this case is three minus the min is negative three divided by two. We get three minus negative three is six divided by two, which equals three. So amplitude a equals three. We can also determine the period using the formula P equals, this is in radians, so two pi over absolute value of B. We know that B is positive, as we said on the left side there, so two pi over B. We know the period for this one. We have one full cycle from zero going up back to zero and heading upward again is three pi over two. So we have three pi over two equals two pi over b. Cross multiply and divide. We would get four pi over three pi equals b. Then divide out the pi's and we get b equals four over three. And then we can write our equation y equals a, which is 3 sine bx, which is 4 over 3x. The amplitude we could have also seen from our graph. If we look from the x-axis, the x-axis appears to be the midline. We look from there up to a maximum, we get 3 and we look from the x-axis down to a minimum, we also get an amplitude of three. If your graph doesn't have 
any vertical shift, then you can look from the x-axis to a maximum or from the x-axis to a minimum to get your amplitude. Next, y equals a cos bx. So we want to write this as a cos function. We should have seen from 5.1 that cos functions that don't have any horizontal shift have a y-intercept at the maximum and then they go down as we head to the right. So this function is going the same direction as y equals cos x. which means that A and B are positive. Amplitude, we don't need any vertical shift in this function, so our amplitude we can get by looking from the maximum to the x-axis, which is four, and if we go from the x-axis to the minimum, it's also four. So our A amplitude is four. We can do that with the formula a equals max minus min divided by 2. Max is 4 minus the min of negative 4 divided by 2. 4 minus negative 4 is 8 divided by 2. Gives us an amplitude equal to 4 and also the A value equals 4 since we know the A value is positive. Now we need to find B. To do that we need to know the period. We look at the graph. We go, we have one maximum at x equals to zero. The next maximum, which would be one full cycle, is at x equals pi. So our period in this case is pi. And the formula tells us that p equals two pi divided by absolute value of b. We know that b is positive, so this would be 2 pi divided by b, and we know that p equals pi. So pi equals 2 pi over b. We can put a 1 under pi to make it a fraction, and then cross multiply and divide. Then b equals 2 pi divided by pi, and b equals 2. Our function is then y equals 4 cos 2x. For translations, remember if c is greater than 0, the graph moves right. If c is less than 0, the graph moves left. If d is greater than 0, the graph moves up. If d is less than 0, the graph moves down. For vertical translations of the periodic function, the d value equals the maximum plus the minimum divided by two. So amplitude is max minus min divided by two. The d value is max plus min divided by two. Then the max value equals the d value plus the amplitude, which this should really say absolute value of a because amplitude is the absolute value of the A value, and the minimum value would be the D value minus the absolute value of A. And the D value is your midline. Using your knowledge of transformations, graph y equals cos x plus 45 degrees minus 2. Let's compare this to y equals cos of x. This function is y equals cos of x with a vertical and horizontal shift. Here we have plus 45 degrees. That's a horizontal shift left 45 degrees. Remember the standard form is x minus c, so since it's x plus 45, that means that c is actually negative 45, so that tells us to go left. Then we have 
minus 2 outside. That's a d value of negative 2, which tells us to go down 2. Let's start by graphing y equals cos of x. We're in degrees because the equation has degrees in it. The period for cos x is 360 degrees. Looks like the same grid we've been using, so probably counting by 30, 30, 60, 90, 120, 150, 180, 210, 240, 270, 300, 330, and 360 takes up most of the space and gets us to 360. So I'm going to put 360 there. I'm going to write every third one, 30, 60, 90 degrees. Another 30, 60, 90 degrees would take us to 180. Then another 30, 60, 90 degrees would take us to 270. Then another 30, 60, 90 degrees would take us to 360. For the y values, cos x goes up to 1. I'm going to put 1 here and negative 1. Then we have 2 and 3 negative 2 and negative 3. Okay, let's graph cos x. We should know by now that it starts at 0 degrees and y equals to 1. Then at 90 degrees cos x equals 0. Then at 180 degrees cos x is negative 1. Then at 270 degrees cos x is 0 and then at 360 degrees we get back to cos x being positive 1. We join those points together and we get this curve y equals cos x. Now we're going to transform that curve to be y equals cos x plus 45 degrees minus 2. So we're shifting everything down to and also left 45 degrees. I'm going to mark off where 45 degrees would be. So between 0 and 90, I have three lines because I was counting by threes, 30, 60, 90. Right in the middle, so at 1 and a half, that would be 3. Then I get to 90. Halfway between 90 and 180 would be another 45, so right there. From 180 to 270, halfway between would be 45. From 270 to 360, halfway between would be 45. The midpoint of uh, y equals cos x is y equals to 0. We're shifting down to, so the midpoint of our graph will be at y equals negative 2. Now each point on y equals cos x is going to get shifted left 45 degrees and then down 2. I'm going to start with the point on the right going left 45 degrees and down 2. My point is now here on my transformed function. Next point is at 270 and 0. I go left 45 degrees and then down 2. It would be on our midline. The next point is at x equals to 180 and y equals negative 1. I go left 45 degrees and then down 2 and it's at a y value of negative 3. The next point's at 90 degrees and x equals 0. I go left 45 degrees and down 2, which takes me to my midline. And then the last point is at 0 degrees and y equals 1. I go left 45 degrees, which is 1.5 on this scale, and then I go down 2. And then I can connect those points. And that's our transformed function, y equals cos x plus 
45 degrees minus 2. State the domain and the range. The domain would be the same as y equals cos x, which is x such that x e r, all real numbers, and the range that's defined by the max and min value, y such that our minimum is negative 3, is less than or equal to y, less than or equal to our max, which is negative 1, y e r. And what has happened to the graph compared to y equals cos x? We already stated this at the top. It was shifted left 45 degrees and shifted down 2. Sketch the graph of y equals 2 sine theta plus 2 pi plus 2 over 2 cycles and compare it to y equals sine theta. We don't have to label the x and y axes this time, which is nice. Let's start by graphing y equals sine theta. Sine theta starts at 0, 0, and then it moves upward as it goes to the right. Our x-intercepts are at 0, pi, 2 pi, 3 pi, and 4 pi. Halfway between the first two x-intercepts at pi over 2, let's see how many increments we have between each x-intercept. We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So halfway would be 3. This would be pi over 2. We're going to have our max value at that, so up to 1 and put a dot. Then halfway between pi and 2 pi, we have our minimum, we put a dot. Then halfway between 2 pi and 3 pi, we have our max again. And halfway between 3 pi and 4 pi, we have our min again. And then we join our points together to get our curve y equals sine x. Next, we want to use transformations to draw our new function. We have 2 sine theta plus pi over 2 plus 2. Let's write down our parameters. We have a equals 2, which tells us the amplitude. Then we have c would equal negative pi over 2, which means a shift left pi over 2 and d equals 2 which is a shift up 2 and d also tells us our midpoint is at y equals 2 can draw that on here We can also calculate our max and min points. The max is equal to d plus the amplitude, which is the absolute value of a, which in this case d is 2, and a is 2, the absolute value of 2 is 2, so 2 plus 2, so our max is going to be at 4, and then our min is d minus the absolute value of a, which is the amplitude, 2 minus absolute value of 2 is 2 minus 2, so the minimum value is at 0. Okay, let's transform each point now. Using mapping notation, we have a point x, y on y equals sine x would go to x is being shifted left pi over 2, so x minus pi over 2, and y is being stretched by a factor of 2 and then shifted up 2, so 2y plus 2. So we know that our maximum points are going to be at 4 
our minimum points are going to be at 0 and our x intercepts from y equals sine x are going to be on the midline y equals 2. So we really just need to think about the horizontal shift of the points, but we'll know where they go in terms of y. We're shifting pi over 2 left, so we need to figure out how many steps on our x-axis is pi over 2. From 0 to pi is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 steps, so half of that would be pi over 2. So every 1, 2, 3 is pi over 2. So let's mark increments of pi over 2 by putting a line at every third step along the horizontal axes. First one from 0, 3 over, that would be pi over 2, then 3 over, we get to pi, which would be 2 pi over 2, then go 3 over, that would be 3 pi over 2, 3 more, that would be 4 pi over 2, which is 2 pi, 3 more, 5 pi over 2, 3 more would be 6 pi over 2, which is 3 pi, another 3 would be 7 pi over 2, and another 3 would be 8 pi over 2, which is 4 pi. This will just help us to do the horizontal shifting for each point. I'm going to start with this maximum here. We want to shift it left pi over 2, which as we just saw was 3 steps left on the horizontal axes. And then it's a maximum, and we saw that maximums for this function are going to be at y equals to 4. So I shift over pi over 2, which lands me on the y-axis, and then I go up to y equals 4, and my dot is now here. Then I'm going to move to the right and continue on. So I have a point at pi, this is on the x-axis. I know that a dot that's on the x-axis is going to be on the midline of my new graph because the midline is the x-axis for y equals sine x. So it's still going to be on the midline. I'm just going to shift it over pi over 2, which is 3 units this way, and then I go up to my midline, and it's going to go right there. Next point would be this one down here. I'm going to shift it left pi over 2, which is 3 units on the x-axis, and then it's a minimum, and I know that minimums for this equation are at 0, so it's going to go over three units on the x-axis, and then it's going to go up to zero on the y-axis. So it's going to land right there. Next point is this x-intercept at 2 pi. I'm shifting it left pi over 2, which takes me three units to the left, and then because it's on my center line for y equals sine x, it's going to be on my center line for the new function, so it's going to land right there. Back to a maximum again. We're shifting left pi over 2, which is 3 units horizontally, and then we're going up to y equals 4, because all of our maximums for the translated function are at 4. Now we're on another x-intercept, I shift it left pi over 2, which is 3 units to the left, and then it's an x-intercept, it's on the midline, so it's going to be on the midline up here as well. Then we have another minimum, we shift it left pi over 2, which is 3 units on the x-axis, and then it's a minimum, the minimums on our transform function we calculated are at 0, so it's going to go up and land on x equals 3 pi, y equals 0. And then the last point on the right hand side, it's an x-intercept, we're shifting it pi over 2 to the left, which is 3 units on the x-axis, and then it's on the midline, so it's going to go up to the midline of the new function. Now we can join these points with a curve. We don't quite have two cycles here, we want two cycles, but we can look at the pattern. The next point has to be a maximum, 
So it's going to be up at uh, y equals to 4. And if I look at this point, to get from this point to this point, I have to go over 1, 2, 3, and then up to 4. So if I go from this point over 1, 2, 3, and then up to 4, and put my dot there. And then I can continue this. And now we have two full cycles. This is our graph y equals 2 sine theta plus pi over 2 plus 2. Let's get a graph of y equals 2 cos 4 x plus pi minus 1 over 2 cycles. Determine the following vertical displacement. Vertical displacement is the vertical shift, which is d equals negative 1. The amplitude, amplitude is absolute value of the a value. a is 2, absolute value of 2 equals 2. The period we get by taking 2 pi in this case divided by the absolute value of b absolute value of b here would be absolute value of 4 which gives us 2 pi over 4 which gives us pi over 2 so our period is pi over 2 and our horizontal shift is the c value which equals negative pi domain and range domain for all sinusoidal functions that are not word problems is xer X such that x e r and the range is determined by the max and the min which we can calculate the max is d plus the absolute value of a d in this case is negative 1 and the amplitude is 2 so that gives us a max value of 1 the min is d minus the amplitude, absolute value of a, which is negative 1 minus 2 in this case, which is negative 3. Then our range is defined by our max min, y, such that negative 3 is less than or equal to y, it's less than or equal to 1, y, e, r. I can put dotted lines for my max, my min, and my midpoint. The midpoint is at d equals negative 1. I'm going to say that this is 1 and this is negative 1. So we have the midpoint of our transformed function here. Then the max is at positive 1. and the minimum is at negative 3. I'm going to graph y equals cos x first. I'm going to go up 4 on the x-axis and then that will be my pi over 2. Go up another 4 and that will be pi. Go up another 4 and that would be 3 pi over 2. Then going the negative direction, go 1, 2, 3, 4, and that would be negative pi over 2. 1, 2, 3, 4, and that would be negative pi. At 0 degrees, y equals cos x is 1, so I have a point there. At pi over 2, cos x is equal to 0. Then we go to theta equals to pi, and cos is equal to negative 1. And then at theta equals 3 pi over 2, y is equal to 0. Going the other direction, at negative pi over 2, cosine is the same as at pi over 2, so it's 0, and at negative pi, it's the same as positive pi, so it's negative 1. 
Then I can join my points together with a curve. And there's my y equals cos x function. To draw the transformed function, I know that my period is pi over 2. I know my max and my min. I know my midpoint. Let's use mapping notation to transform one of the points from cos x to our new function. I'm going to pick the max point that's at 0, 1. So x, y on cos x would transform to x divided by 4 minus pi and 2y minus 1. The point 0, 1 on cos x would transform to the function 0 divide 4 minus pi and 2 times 1 minus 1, which becomes negative pi and 2 minus 1, which is 1. So on our new graph, we get a max value at negative pi and positive 1, so here. Then we know that our period is pi over 2. If I go pi over 2 away from negative pi, I get to negative pi over 2. So that is one period within there. I have a max at negative pi. I'm going one period when I get to negative pi over 2, so I'll need to have another max. Then halfway between those points, I would need to have a min. So there's four steps to get from negative pi, one, two, three, four, to negative pi over two. So halfway in between them at two steps, I would go down to my minimum, which is y equals negative three, and put a dot there. So there's now a minimum point down here at this point. Halfway between a minimum and a maximum is a point on our midline. So here, I would have to have a point on the midline, and also here, I would have to have a point on the midline. And then I can continue that pattern. So from the max point, I went over 1 and down 1, 2, 3, 4 with how I scaled my axes to get to the midpoint. Then I go right one, down one, two, three, four to get to the minimum. Then from there, I go right one and up one, two, three, four to get back to my midpoint. Then I go over one, one, two, three, four up to get back to my maximum. And I keep doing that. So now if I go over one, I'm going to go down two, three, four and put a point on my midline here. Then I'm going to go right one and down to my min minimum line. Then I'm going to go right one and put a point on my midline. Then I'm going to go right one and up to my max and put a point there. And if I join those points together, then I have two cycles of my graph or my function and I can just keep going. I could fill the whole space. So that's two cycles. I could continue to draw more from that last maximum that I was at, move right one and then go down to the midline, put a point. Move right one, go down to the minimum, put a point. Move right one, go back to the midline, put a point. Right one, back to the maximum, put a point right one, back to the midline, right one, down to the minimum, right one, back to the midline, right one, back to the maximum, and then join those points together. And so on. So that is my function y equals 2 cos 4 x plus pi bracket minus 
1. Equations from graphs. Example, write an equation for each of the following functions in the form indicated. It says an equation, not the equation, and that's because there's actually an infinite number of different correct solutions. Because sinusoidal functions cycle, we can write an equation from a graph for a sinusoidal function as a sine function or as a cosine function and with an infinite number of horizontal shifts. The first graph we want to write as a sine function and we have a, b, c, and d. So we have all of our transformations. Sometimes the graph might just say um, a sine bx, so that tells you that there's no horizontal or vertical shift. So you look at what parameters it asks you to write the equation in, and then you know if you don't have to worry about one of the transformations. In this case, we have all of them. Some of them might be one, that's fine, but we want to find all of our parameters here. I'm going to start just by drawing the basic sine function. By now we should know that sine x goes to the point 0, 0, then it heads upwards and comes back down at pi. So it's back to 0 at pi halfway between 0 and pi, so at pi over 2, it's up at 1, and then at 2 pi, it's going to be an x-intercept again at y equals to 0, halfway between pi and 2 pi, so at 3 pi over 2, it's going to be at negative 1, and so on. So it'll continue that pattern. and look like that. So things I want to do with this graph before I find all my information, I want to probably label my max value, my min value, and my midline. So here we have a max of negative 1. Minimum is negative 7. From negative 1 to negative 7, that's 6 units. So our midline should be halfway in between 3 units down from negative 1, which would also be 3 units up from negative 7. So that would be our midline, which is the d value, is negative 4. So that's one of our parameters. We want to find a b, c, and d is negative 4. Okay, then I want to look at what is this doing, what is the graph doing compared to the y equals sine x function. At the y-axis, the graph goes through the midline, and then to the right of that, it starts going up, and it goes to a maximum. So that's the same as y equals sine x. That tells us three pieces of information. It tells us that the a value is positive because we haven't reflected this across the x-axis because then if we had reflected it across the x-axis then after this point it would be heading down. It tells us that the b value is positive as well because we haven't reflected across the y-axis because if we had then this part would now be over here so again it would be heading down and it tells us that there's no horizontal shift because we are in the same, this point is in the same location as it is on sine x. And we head upward, we head upward. 
So a and b are positive and c is equal to zero. we can write c equals to zero, and then we need to calculate what a and b are. We know that a is positive, and we know the absolute value of a is the amplitude, the distance from the midline to a max or to a min. If we look here, we have from the midline down to the min is three, so absolute value of a equals three, or the amplitude is three, and then we know from the direction of the graph that a is positive, so a equals three. To calculate b, we need to look at the period of the graph. In this case, we have the period, if we look at one cycle from here back to here, that's two pi. So one cycle, is 2 pi and on the sine function one cycle is 2 pi which means that there's no horizontal stretch or b equals 1 and we also said there was no reflection because the direction is the same as y equals sine x therefore b is 1 then our function is y equals a is 3 sine b is 1 so I don't need to write that then we have x minus c which is x minus 0 so just x and then we have our d value which is minus 4 Next one, y equals a cos b x minus c plus d. So this one's telling us that we need to write this as a cos function. Let's draw the basic cos function, y equals cos x. Our period is 2 pi. But cos starts at a y-intercept of 1 then at pi over 2 cos is 0 then at pi cos is negative 1 at 3 pi over 2 cos is back to 0 and at 2 pi cos is back to positive 1 and going the other direction at negative pi over 2 cos is 0 at negative pi cos is negative 1. Can join those together. There's a graph of y equals cos x. Let's draw the max, minimum, and midlines. We have a max equal to 3, minimum equals negative 3, which means our midline would be halfway between those, which is at 0. So d equals 0. There's many different ways that I can look at this. I could uh, look at it as a reflection or a horizontal shift. I'm gonna say that this max point here was shifted over. So we know that on cos, the max point starts as a y-intercept. So I'm gonna say that that was shifted over to here. 
I need to know how far over that was. Our scale is going up by pi over 3. I go up 2 units, so that would be 2 pi over 3. And it shifted to the right, so that would be my c value is 2 pi over 3. Okay, so then the direction to the side, if a and b are positive, what is the direction of this function and does it match the direction of y equals cos x? Yes, it does. I said that this point here was my max point that started as a y-intercept and it just got shifted over. From that y-intercept, we head downward on y equals cos x. From that y-intercept, we head downward on this function. So the direction is the same which tells us that the a value and the b value are both positive. Then I can determine my a value by looking at the amplitude, the distance between the midline and a minimum or a maximum is three. So absolute value of a equals three. And we just said that a is positive. So a is positive three. And then for the b value, we need to know the period. To find the period, I'm gonna look from the first maximum, which had an x value of 2 pi over 3. Then I'm going to go to the next positive maximum and determine what that x value would be. So we already said that our scale is pi over 3. So 2 pi, 2 pi over 3, 3 pi over 3, 4 pi over 3, 5 pi over 3, 6 pi over 3, 7 pi over 3, 8 pi over 3. Then our period, the distance between these two period would, e would equal 8 pi over 3 minus 2 pi over 3, which equals 6 pi over 3 and that gives us period equals 6 pi over 3 is 2 pi, which is the same as y equals cos x. Therefore, our b value equals 1 because there's no horizontal stretch here. And then we can write our equation y equals 3 cos b is 1 x minus 2 pi over 3 and then d is 0. From the following graph, write the function in the form of a y equals a sine b x minus c plus d, where a is greater than 0. So telling us that a is greater than 0 tells us that there is no vertical reflection because if a is less than 0, if a is a negative, then that's a vertical reflection. So this is telling us make it a sine function that does not have any vertical reflection. There are still going to be many different possible Let's do our max, min, and midline. Max equals 1. Minimum is negative 3. And then there's a distance of 4 units between that. So 2 units would be halfway. 
which gives us d equals negative 1. And for b, even though we're writing a different function and that's going to be a cos function, our d value will be the same for both of those. Okay, next I can look at... If I look at this point, from that point, the graph heads upward, so which is the same direction as sine x from the point that's usually at 0, 0, heads upward. So I could say that this point is just the translation of this point. We already, we already know our vertical shift is down one, so let's figure out our horizontal shift. If we're taking a point from here and we're moving it over to pi over three, then we shifted pi over three to the right. So C would equal positive pi over three. We know that A is positive. We just need to know the amplitude to determine A looking at the distance from the midline to a minimum or a maximum point, we get that the amplitude absolute value of A equals two. Since the question tells us A is greater than zero, then we know that A equals positive two. And the last thing we need is the B value. To get the B value, we need to know the period if I look from the y-axis, we go down, then up, then I come back to the center there. That's one full cycle. So that tells me that tells me that the period of this function is period equals two pi over three. which is not the same as the sine or cos, as the basic sine or cos functions, because those are two pi. So we need to calculate the B value. We have the formula P equals two pi divided by absolute value of B, and that is equal to 2 pi over 3 in this case. That's the period of this function. So 2 pi cross multiply and divide 3 times 2 pi divided by 2 pi equals absolute value of b. That gives us absolute value b equals 3. Then we just have to decide if b is positive or negative. But remember, since we said that, since we decided that this point was, was shifted over from here, and from that point we're going in the same direction, then that would mean that there is no reflection. Because if we had reflected it horizontally, if B was negative, then it would be heading downward, going in the opposite direction of sine x. So we know that B is positive. You can write a note about how we decided that 
So this graph moves in the same as sine x the translated point pi over 3 negative 1 therefore no reflection which tells us that b is positive Okay, so we have all of our parameters. We can write our equation. Y equals A is 2, sine bracket B is 3, bracket X minus pi over 3, close bracket, close bracket, minus 1. Next, we want to do the same thing, but we want to write it as a cos function. Again, it says that a is greater than zero, so that tells us that we have no vertical reflection. Then a would still be two since the amplitude of the graph hasn't changed. D is still negative 1, that's the midline of the graph. The period of the graph is still 2 pi over 3, so B could be 3 or it could be negative 3, we'll just have to wait and see on that. Let's determine the C value, the horizontal shift. So recall that the cos function has a maximum point at the y-intercept. So I'm going to find my first positive max, which is here. And I'm going to say that that was shifted over from the y-intercept. I need to determine how far that shift is. So if I look at my scale, I have that 2 is pi over 3. So what is our scale on our x-axis? It would have to be pi over 6. So 1 would have to be pi over 6. And to get from the y-intercept over to where our max has been translated. That's three units on the x-axis, so that's three pi over six, which equals pi over two. So our c value is going to the right, so it's positive pi over two. Now I could have said that um, I could have said that this maximum point was shifted over from here. Or I could have said that this maximum point was shifted left from the y-intercept. So that's why there's so many different possible solutions. Okay, so from that maximum point that I said would have started here and is now shifted over here. What does cos do? y equals cos x. From that point, it heads downward. So our graph is doing the same. It's going the same direction as cos x but from this point so again that tells us that our b value is positive And again, our period is 2 pi over 3, and when we calculated that, that gave us an absolute value of b equal to 3. And since we just said that b is positive, then b equals positive 3. 
There's our four parameters. We can now write our equation. This time it's a cos function. Y equals A is two cos bracket B is three bracket X minus pi over two close bracket close bracket D is negative one. Complete the following table. The function y equals cos x, we want the min, the max, and the range. So cos x has a minimum at negative one, maximum at positive one, and our range would be from negative one is less than or equal to y is less than or equal to positive one. Cos x plus five, so that's been shifted up five units. Then our minimum, add five to that, be negative one plus five, which is four. Maximum one plus five gives us six for the max. And our range would be four is less than or equal to y is less than or equal to six. Two cos x minus three. So we have a vertical stretch factor of two and a shift down three. Take our minimum value, negative one, times it by the a value, which is two, and then subtract three, and we would get negative two minus three is negative five. Take the max value, times it by our a value, subtract three, and we would get negative one. So negative five, less than or equal to y, less than or equal to negative one for the range y equals sine x that has a minimum at negative one, a maximum at positive one, and a range from negative one less than or equal to y less than or equal to positive one. Sine x minus seven, it's a vertical shift down seven, so negative one minus seven, which gives us negative eight, and one minus seven, which gives us negative six. Our range is then negative eight, less than equal to y, less than equal to negative six, and then negative three sine x minus one. This one's a little tricky, I'm gonna do it outside here. So I take my min value of negative one and multiply it by the a value of negative three, and then I'm going to add one. That gives me negative one times three is three plus one is four, and then take the max value of one times it by the a value of negative three and add one. That gives me negative three plus one, which is negative two. So starting with my min value actually gives me a bigger number in the end. So that would be my max, which is four, and my min would be negative two. So my range is negative two is less than or equal to y is less than or equal to four. State the values of all parameters and state the amplitude, period, phase shift, horizontal shift, and vertical shift for y equals negative 4 cos pi over 3 x minus 1 plus 2. Start by writing our parameters. a equals negative 4, b equals pi over 3, c equals positive one since it's x minus one and then d equals two. Next we need to state the amplitude. Which is the absolute value of a so in this case the absolute value of negative four which equals four. Then the period We know that the period is two pi divided by the absolute value of b, which is in this case two pi divided by absolute value of pi over three, which is two pi divided by pi over three, which is two pi times three over pi. 
pi's divide out and we get period is six. Next is the phase shift. We get the phase shift from C C is positive one, so this tells us that it's one unit to the right. And then lastly, the vertical shift. D is two, so that tells us it shifted two units up. Write the equation of a sinusoidal function in the form f of x equals a sine b x minus c plus d, where a is greater than zero. Given the characteristics, amplitude is two, period is pi, translated pi over three units left, and one unit down. So it tells us that a is greater than zero. Combine that with amplitude equal to two, and we get a equals two. We have the period is pi. We can use that to calculate b. Period is two pi divided by absolute value of b. In this case, the period equals pi. We can write that over one and then cross multiply and divide. So one times two pi divided by pi gives us two pi over pi equals absolute value of b. Divide out the pi's, we get absolute value of b equals two. And then it doesn't state anywhere if b is positive or negative. So really we could have b equals plus or minus two. Then we have that the function is translated pi over three units left. That would give us c equals negative pi over three, and then one unit down, which gives us d equals negative one. So we get two functions, one with a positive b value, which is f of x equals two sine two x minus negative, so plus pi over three, close bracket, close bracket, minus one. Or if b is negative, we can have f of x equals two sine negative two x plus pi over three, close bracket, close bracket, minus one. The monthly sales of a seasonal product are approximated by the sinusoidal function s of t equals 760 plus 480 cos pi t over 6, where t is the time in months and t equals 1 corresponds to January. State the values of all the parameters. a would equal 480. b would be pi over six. C is zero. We don't have anything added or subtracted in our brackets. And D would equal 760. Determine the max and min values of the function. Our max is equal to D plus the absolute value of A which is 760 plus 480 in this case, which gives us 1,240. And then the min equals D minus the absolute value of A, which is 760 minus 480, which gives us 280. State the period of s of t. Period is 2 pi divided by the absolute value of b. 
in this case we have 2 pi divided by absolute value of pi over 6, which is 2 pi divided by pi over 6, which becomes 2 pi times 6 over pi. We can divide out the pi's and we get 2 times 6, which is 12. So our period is 12, which in this case would represent 12 months or 1 year. Use your answers from B and C to set an appropriate window and graph one cycle of the function on your calculator. Using your graph, determine in which months sales were at least 1,000 units. From parts B and C, our x min, our x values are the months, so 0 months to a maximum of 12 months. And going up by one, one month each time. Then our y values, we determined our min and max were 240 and 1240. So our y min, and we could go from zero, we could go from 200. I mean, it started zero. And then my y max. We want to go higher than 1240, so maybe we go to. Uh, 1500 you could go to 1300 you could go to 1250 as long as it's bigger than 1250 and then I'm going to go up by hundreds let's graph this before I graph I need to make sure I'm in the right mode I don't have any degree symbols in this equation, so that tells me I need to be in radians, plus I have a pi in there, so that also gives me a hint. Go to mode, and I'm in radians, so that's okay. Hit exit, go to y equals 760 plus 480 cos math fraction pi x on top, 6 on the bottom. Graph that, and I'm going to change my window right away to our x min was 0, x max was 12 for 12 months, going up by 1s. My y min, I went with 0, my y max, I went with 1500, and my scale, I went with 100. Graph that, and here's a picture we get. Let's sketch that. The x-axis is the month. And the y-axis is the sales. And our graph looks something like this as a quick sketch. And we know that our maximum is at 1240 and our minimum is at 280. And then it says use your graph to determine which month sales were at least 1000 units. So if I go back to my y equals and then under y2 I put 1000. Enter, graph that. So now I have a line at 1000 and any month that has a point above that line will be a solution to the question. So I draw a graph or draw a line at y equals 1000. Where do they intersect? Let's find out. Second trace number five. First curve, enter. Second curve, enter. Guess, enter and I get at two is where they intersect. So that would be at February, because month number one they said was January. And then where's the other location? Second trace, five. First curve, enter. Second curve, enter, enter. And at 10, month 10 is October. 
then we can say that sales are greater than or equal to 1,000 because it says um, in which months sales were at least 1,000 units. So that includes the times that they were 1,000 units. Sales are greater than or equal to 1,000 units in January, February, October, and after October, so November, and December. That brings us to the end of chapter five, lesson two.